The following show contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to the Port Charlie Podcast, everybody. Holy shit, I finally get to say that one out of my face. I've been trying for the past month to get something other than Thespian Talk going again. <laughs> oh, I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and my co-host is Ms. Julia. Hello, lovely to be back. Yes, at long last, and boy, this month has been one hell of a month, because it's, it's been about a month. It's the last time we did this. Yeah. Yeah, the last time we did this, did this, it was like right before the anniversary. Oh. And I've never really been able to even watch General mm-hmm. Hospital in weeks, so I'm so excited. I was able to, I got my, you know, internet functioning well enough. I was able to jump back in with the nurses' ball, which was a great moment to come back in because a lot of, you know, plots were kind of. Uh, uh, addressed, or at least, you know, featured kind of head-on this week. Oh, yeah. Um, so that was really nice to come back to. Mm-hmm. But one thing that's already been... T- yeah, it's tying up. I-, I don't think it's quite finished yet, but it's, it's it's starting to tie up. Was the big one around the anniversary, Luke. And, and everything in his past. It's like, we got to visit his past. We got to visit... You know, you know, we got to see like his sisters when they were kids. We got to see Bill Eckert when he was a kid, which hey, you know, more Bill Eckert hasn't. We had, the character himself has not been on since the '90s. So even in flashback, having Bill on, oh hey, sweet. And and it turns out, first of all, major props to Tony Geary, and if, if for nothing else than this one line, he's he's at the old he's at his old house, and he's looking around. And he, he he starts seeing visions of what was going on back in the day, back you know back the day that his dad supposedly left. And he's looking around, he sees his family, he's all smiling and happy memories. Then he sees his dad walk in, and I swear I have never heard so much venom come out of the man that when he said, "Daddy," I'm like, "Oh shit, this is gonna be good." Oh, it's, it's just ma- the man. You know, he has earned his Emmys and, and and everything. He has earned them. Oh, holy shit! You you can tell that Luke absolutely detested his father, and it goes to show. Holy, I mean, I mean, even for the time frame, because this supposedly took place. Well, not supposedly, but it took place back in '63, which of course was the same day that General Hospital first started to air. And within the entire episode, there's like characters, there's like actors who are playing current characters, playing characters back then. Like uh, you have Laura Wright playing Luke's mother. Uh, you have um, uh, J- uh, Jason uh, Thompson playing uh, Dr. Hardy and uh, Becky Herbs playing uh, um, um, Nurse Weber. And, and I think, uh, uh, oh God, what's his name? Uh, uh, Lucas, guy who plays Lucas. Uh, his name is... Thank you. Brian. Yeah. Said it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And and he was playing I think he was playing Phil Brewer as well. So you you had some of the old characters coming back with new faces and they did a really good job in playing them. Uh, what, what a lovely send up to to the original cast. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. And it all centered around what you know, like like I kind of alluded into, what happened that night. And it turns out an argument was started by, you know, between Pat and their, and their father because Pat, back in the day, you know, she was she was definitely more one of those, like, I, I, I want to say first wave feminist, feminist back in the 60s, but I don't know if that's accurate. She's, she's definitely more of a, of, of, of a, uh, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? She, she's more forward thinking than her obviously more conservative father. A conservative and very abusive and very alcoholic. And what it looked like was going to happen was, you know, you know, his, you know, uh, Tim Spencer, who, who of course was played by Tony Geary, by the way. And this does, this does kind of become a thing that ties into Dark Luke. And, and um, so, uh, where was I? Yes, 
you know, he was about ready to start beating the shit out of Pam or out of Luke and, and everything. And Luke's mom was like, no, 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 you don't touch them. You take them out on me. And Luke steps in to defend her because he's had enough of this bullshit. And he gets the bat, you know, his mom tries to get the bat away from him. He accidentally whacks her in the head, knocks her out. And while Pam is getting her to the hospital, he and his dad have the confrontation, and he kills his dad. Because, you know, you can only put up with so much, you know. Meanwhile, at the hospital, you know, Pam is there with her mom, and it turns out her their mom died from that whack in the head. So Luke accidentally killed his mother but then killed his father quite on purpose. And Bill Eckert was there to help cover everything up, to hide the body and everything, because once Luke realized what happened, he, he just shut down. You know, with, with, with holy shit, I don't remember the actor who was, who was playing young Luke, but oh my god, the look on his face, just, just the horrified, oh my god, what have I done, look. The, the whole episode was just amazing. In fact, if it's on iTunes, I am. In fact, it should still be on iTunes. If it's not, I'm going to be very sad. But I need to go and grab it if I have not already. Oh, because that is an episode that needs to be just saved and preserved and put on a best of list. Because that was an amazing episode, and it told a lot of how Luke became that. That in the following episodes, where you know as Luke got older, you know he. he tried to fight against his dad because one of the things his dad had mentioned was you know what you're just like me you're gonna be just like me yada 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 this abusive alcoholic dipshit of an asshole who who is nigh irredeemable and luke was trying to fight against it and then the turning point came when he took out frank smith back in the early 90s and at that point luke had laura and lucky and, and his family and he's like you know what i can't do it Sonny, who at the time was just on his own, he was able to take over and gain all that power, which the darker side of Luke really resented him for. Because, I guess both Sonny and his, his quote-unquote lighter side, because Luke's not necessarily a light character, but for, for the sake of, of uh, comparison here. And, and, and so that dark side kind of festered up a little bit, and over the years, he, he made his connections with Cesar Faison, Jerry Jacks, Julian Jerome, and even started working with Helena Cassidyne, who, by the way, for those who are new, is one of his mortal enemies, working with her. Holy shit, dude. In fact, he even shot and killed her at one point. Yeah, she got over it, but still. So it's like, it's like the two sides are doing things, and for a while it did seem like, you know, when, when Light Luke was walking around and, and and all of that, he had no idea what his dark side was doing, you know, when he was actually his right self, and uh, that's why it's like it's like a multiple personality thing. And, and it's interesting because normally, now I, in no way, shape, or form, pretend to be an expert on DID at all, mm -hmm. but just from how I've seen it portrayed in the media, it's usually that the alternate personalities are. To are, are created or, or come about to protect the the original personality in some way or some aspect. They come out to handle things that the original personality can't. Right. And so it's interesting to me because Luke's alter seems to be actively working against him or to like undermine him, and they have very opposing goals. But you know, but I guess now saying that out loud, I guess Connie and Kate were kind of the same way. Con Connie did come out to handle things that Kate couldn't. Mm -hmm. But she she definitely also had, you know, opposing goals. And of course, you know, there's some dramatic license on a soap opera, especially oh, yeah. with something like this. Um, but but I also think that it's it's interesting because even though Luke's alter resent, and what are we calling him? Do we have a name uh, for Luke's alter? Uh, some people might still be calling him Fluke. I just call him so, Dark Luke. Okay, T Dark Luke. Um, so Dark Luke, even though he resents Sunny, I think it's interesting because this new sort of revelation of this backstory mm -hmm. to me actually paints Luke and Sunny. They're even more similar. Like they've always kind of had this 
friendship, which we've seen a lot less of in more recent years, but, Mm -hmm. you know, they've been friends for a very long time, and they have a lot in common in some ways. Yeah. And I think it's it's very interesting that that's a very similar backstory to Sonny with his abusive... And it wasn't it Sonny's stepfather, right? Yes. Who was the one who abused his mom, and then... um, and I think somebody. It, it I think Joe Scully Jr.'s dad. So I guess so. Just Joe Scully ended up taking him out for him, right? And then he joined yeah. up with with that crew, with that uh, mob family. Mm-hmm. Um, so so Sonny didn't do the deed himself, but he definitely would have, and he was very grateful to, to Joe Scully for for taking him out. Yeah. And now you know Luke did it himself and got all traumatized. But I think that's a really interesting uh, parallel with their backstories. Oh yeah. But but in different. And, you know, a different twist. It doesn't feel repetitive. It's just very uh, uh, similar. Yeah, and in, in fact, I, in the aftermath of everything, Luke, Luke and Sonny had a he had a coming to meeting. You know, they they met up, and Luke, after you know, when everything is all said and done, Luke is in the hospital. You know, after being arrested, because at one point he did, you know, he w- he did do some illegal things. I, I think he like. It was like they were worried about him assaulting uh, Pat or whatever, or or he tried and held a bunch of them ha- captive for a little bit. And well, like, did he like black or like sort of not kidnap but like threaten uh, uh, Denise? Uh, Valerie, yeah. Valerie, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he did. So yeah, so Dante had to arrest him, but you know they talked him into like, okay, you know he's under arrest, but we'll take him to the hospital so we can get some help, that sort of thing. You know, he's in police custody, but he's getting the help he needs, which is a very good thing, because <laughs> that yeah. seems like, seems more than what he needs, and, and Luke, holy shit, he got, he, he's, wow, when he realizes what he has done, now that, that, the memory, his memory is kind of just kind of coming together, and he's like, holy shit, oh my god, what have I done, you know, Valerie, for her part, because Pat died, pretty much, I guess, of just, Ex- you know, her heart gave out after everything was done. You know, writing wise, it's like, oh, she we brought her on just so Luke could have this revelation. Now we don't need her anymore, so we kill her off. Um, you know, writing wise, that's kind of it. But you know, but she's also yeah, old. Nice to have her around uh, for a little while longer. Mm-hmm. Um, but at least we do get Valerie out of the deal. Yes. Uh, and Valerie, I'm, of course. Well, I can't say that I'm loving this pseudo love triangle with. Dante and Lulu, like. Yeah. So, so yeah, that 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 triangle thing is very very weird, but um, but yeah, once her mom died, she immediately blamed Luke because well, all the trauma and everything that she had to relive with him, because hey, you know that it's it's a big family thing that happened, and 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 so she blamed Luke, and she went and she held, I think it was a scalpel to his neck, because you know desperation and grief and everything and while Dante is sitting there talking her down and, and, and everything Luke is like you know what just fucking do it I don't deserve to live after all this bu- fucking shit you know very suicidal and and all of that and it's just like holy shit uh, I'm, I'm really glad she didn't because uh, I wouldn't want to see Luke go out that way honestly yeah. but you know Oh, and I got gave him a chance to to kind of make amends with Sonny, and he even I, I think he even told Sonny, yeah, you know what, I was a bastard. You have the right to come, you know, like come and take me out. You know, that's rule of the thing. And Sonny's like, you know what, I understand. I can forgive you. You know, we're friends and all of that, because you know, trauma and shit. I can relate. <laughs> you know, not quite to your extent, but I can relate. Uh, and and it's just, damn. And one touching moment, though, that that I kind of just flew over, was uh, at the end of everything. When as Luke's being led away, uh, Carly and Lucas had shown up just you know because Bobby needed them, and and as Luke's being led away, he looks at Carly and he says, "You know what? You look just like my mother." And and and, and of course, I don't I don't give it the same umph that Tony Geary did, but um, but the way he said it and the way the whole scene played, I was like, "Aww." It was like it was very, very sweet, very touching. Yeah, I, I, and I like that because, like, you know, Carly um, has always. I, I, when I think of Carly, I don't immediately like associate her with the Spencers. Mm-hmm. And I think that was just a really nice moment because Carly is so often, 
character so much more often, you know, involved with Sunny and the mob stuff and her kids. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she and Luke are, are often at odds or, or, or have been a lot, you know, in the past. And, you know, when the chips are down and it really counts, they're there for each other. But, you know, that was a really nice moment for her um, and their relationship and, and her yeah. involvement with that side of her family. Oh, yeah. Oh, so, oh, what, 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 there was some other things about this particular plot thread I wanted to go over. Uh, I know the last, I know, I think at first Scott was wanting to, like, just throw him back in Pentonville and everything. Or just throw him there in the beginning. And, and Luke's like, you know what, let him fucking do it. And Bobby talks him into just let him, you know, putting him in, like, I think Shady Brook or Ferncliff or somewhere to where he can actually get help. And, you know, and you know what, good on Scott. Moving on to, to um, oh, let's see, where else, where else, where else? Oh, right, Jason and Liz and Rick and all of that bullshit and, and Rick the insecure fucking slime bag. Oh, so. And, and, you know, Rick Hurst is just so charming. Mm-hmm. And, and he makes me want to like Rick, but he's just such a fucking piece of shit. He is. It's like, God damn it. I mean, and it's the, here's the thing, though. It's like you have moments, like he, he's sitting there bonding with Sonny, you know, helping Sonny with the, the custody hearing because Michael went and he, he got custody of little Avery, you know, from Sonny, even though, you know, even doing a little bit of an underhanded tactic, you know, which, yeah, it should do Sonny proud because he's not above those either. Um, but, you know, hey, that happens. And I think Michael even admitted that, like, you know, it's at least in part to just get back at Sonny. At least in part. In part, my ass. <laughs> okay, in most. I mean, I'm pretty sure that the motivation to keep Avery safe is a, a, a factor as well. But okay, yeah, but yeah. it would never have occurred to him to do this. He wasn't mad at Sunny. You know what I mean? Like, he might yeah. be a little concerned for her safety, mm-hmm. but he wouldn't have done this if he wasn't trying to get back at Sunny. Yeah, which, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to deny that either. <laughs> it's just, yeah, one of them kind of plays out a little heavier than the other, which, yeah. eh, given given what's happened, I, can, I can't blame Michael for the sentiment of, of, like, wanting to, like, keep Sunny at arm's length, write him out, maybe yeah. give him a few hurts here and there. I'm just not a fan of the way he's gone. He's gone about it. It's just I don't know, Mikey. I don't know about this. And a- a- anyone who follows me on Tumblr knows I've been doing this massive rewatch of Jason and Sam's like entire entire storyline, mm-hmm. like starting in 2002 or whatever. So I'm on 2005 now, and it's so I'm right, or I've just passed this whole that whole thing um, where AJ. Uh, 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 kidnapped Michael and Morgan and Christina and faked Mm -hmm. Michael's death and made him believe that uh, Sonny Carly didn't want him anymore because they had their biological son together, Morgan. And so they come home and this is, I don't know, I've lost count of how many times AJ's death has been faked, but Mm -hmm. AJ's dead, they all think, and uh, they think Michael killed him. Mm. And so I'm just sitting here watching Carly and Sonny everything they possibly can to protect their child and and lie for him and say you know Sonny confessed to killing AJ so that Michael wouldn't have to go on the stand and be further traumatized and they're just doing everything that they can to protect their son this is you know this is like 10 years ago and then I'm watching this storyline and it's just killing me because AJ was such a piece of shit and I know that Sonny that doesn't make murder okay and I understand Michael being upset with him but I just, I hate it. I, I want them to repair their relationship so badly. And I know it would take time. Mm-hmm. But that is my, like, hope and dream that something that, you know, maybe through a little baby Avery or whatever, that they're going to come out of this eventually. Yeah. Which, to touch on, to touch on that a little bit, uh, you know, after the custody hearing, Morgan got the bright idea. And, of course, Kiki, Miss... I am hot, but I don't really have much of a characterization, so I'm just going to go along with Morgan. Anyway, even though I, I kind of protest, but I'm going to do it anyway, because, you know, they, they've... It, it feels to me like she's been weaker in, in terms of, like, her own her own uh, thing. 
But like, um, do, you, do you mean the writing, or like she's weak as a person? Um, I guess a little bit of both. Uh, I guess okay. it depends on how you're looking at it. Um, because it's like, because it's like you know, Kiki had her objections, but apparently they weren't enough to where she stopped Morgan. So you know. Uh, yeah. So it's like it's like right. yeah. Well, Morgan's a fucking idiot. He is, and it's like. I love him, but he's an mm-hmm. idiot. Yeah, it's like, okay, so what he did was he went and switched out Michael's allergy meds for, let's face it, roofie drugs. Cause, and, and, and it's not me being, you know, being a little bit more uh, um, um, hyperbolic or, or, or over the top or anything. They literally say he was roofied. So that's, that's not me. Well, not just me. And so, of course, once the pills are switched... You know, they they stage this whole big makeout session in front of Michael in the Metro Court, and Mikey's like, "Oh God damn it! He, I need a freaking drink," you know. And he has two, he has two drinks, and suddenly he's ro- you know just rolling around like he's had about twenty, you know. And of course, Morgan's playing it up, and Morgan even had the reporter in there just to smear it all in, smear him all over the news. Why? So he can make Michael look unfit. So Sonny could get the baby back by default, or at least get the baby away from Michael, because that's ended up what that's what ended up happening, especially after Michael accidentally knocked over the stroller. <laughs> yeah, just thankfully, uh, thankfully. That, hmm? Go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I was just gonna say, and not that this is strictly relevant, um, but again, I haven't been able to catch everything because mm-hmm. my internet. Are Morgan and Kiki actually back together, or are they just playing it up to mess with? Um, as far as I know, they've been playing it up, but I'm not okay. sure if they're officially back together. Okay, carry on. But, but yes, um, I say yeah, definitely playing it up, and and of course, you know, once Michael loses custody, you know, he's he's upset, and he goes for a drive to clear his head, and and other people are are milling about, like Nina Clay, she's milling about. She went and I think she went and apologized to Silas. And she and Kiki had like a little scuffle at the hospital, and and, and then not long after that, uh, the baby was kidnapped for a little while. And and of course, the big the top suspects were of course Michael, because you know he didn't want to lose the baby, he wants to get the baby back, make sure the baby doesn't go with Morgan and Kiki, who they were granted temporary custody of, and and or Sonny, so you know, but. As far as I know, Michael didn't, and he says he didn't, and I don't see any reason why Michael would, even if, even at even with his attitude. Um, Nina was among them because, well, she's done it before, and it's even to the point where even Franco doubted her, which to me says a really big thing, the way it comes out. And and honestly, I think, I personally think Nina was kind of just going a little so. F- at least at first, Nina seemed like she was going a little far ahead and assuming that Franco didn't trust her and Franco thought she kidnapped the baby. But the way I'm seeing it, the way Franco was probably seeing it, I don't know if the writers intended it this way, but the way I was seeing it was like, okay, Frank, in Franco's mind, he's like, okay, if she kidnapped the baby, what do we do? You know, we go on from there. You know, whether she did or she didn't. Right. And I think it's interesting. I still don't, I mean, I still hate Franco. I will always hate Franco. Mm-hmm. Um, but I hate him slightly less when he's with Nina. Yeah. And I don't think that she would lie to him. No. You know, th- th- they're they're interesting in that I don't think they really have anyone else that they can trust, either of them. Yeah. Um, you know, on a good day, Franco has his dad and Nina has her brother. Mm-hmm. Um, but, of course... You know, Nathan upholds the law, and he's going to do what's in her best interest, but he's not going to enable her. Right. And Scotty, you never know. Like, he yeah. kind of wants to help his son, but he's also kind of a shit human being, but he's also technically, you know, an upholder of the law as well. So, um, but they're the only ones that, they, that kind of are on that same, like, level of slightly lack of morals wavelength. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's, it, that, that would have been like, or that's such a, you know, a blow to her to, if she believes that he doesn't believe in her anymore. Yeah. Which, I think the last time I saw them, she had like kicked him out of the hotel room because they're staying in the Metro Court because, 
blackmail. Because if you remember, um, Olivia went in and she confessed to Franco, who she thought was you know still high high on tripping on balls on the LSD overdose and probably wouldn't remember anything. Bear in mind he was faking at the time, and she told him, "Hey, you know what? I got knocked up by fucking Julian Jerome." And Franco is using that knowledge to blackmail her for a room. Uh, which, that might be changing soon, considering what happens af at the end of the nurse's ball. But we'll get there. We'll get there. So, so yeah. Uh, as far as who kidnapped the baby, we don't know. We just know that the baby is suddenly back. And the baby was in Silas's apartment. Which makes me think, I think Silas did it for one of two reasons. One, to give okay. Ava... Yeah, to help Ava, because she... had come down with leukemia. I don't remember if we talked about this on any previous show, but yeah. Suddenly, Ava's, you know, she's alive, dying from leukemia and wanting to die because Silas went and he checked pretty much everywhere except the newborn baby because obvious reasons. And there were no matches. Kiki wasn't a match. Julian wasn't a match. You know, none of, none of her relatives were a match. Nobody in the Na National Data Bank was a match, which, oh boy. That's a lot of fuckers. So, I yeah they um they're make, they were making me nervous with this but with the baby and the kidnapping and everything that's kind of gone on I'm mm -hmm. I'm no longer I would say I'm only like twenty to thirty percent worried that they're actually going to kill Ava. Um, yeah. Because Laura West is amazing and they just they just better not. So, but I don't mm. think they're going to anymore. For a while there, I was worried. Yeah. Um, but this is making me feel better. Yeah, like like I said, the baby was kidnapped, like I said, because of Ava, you know, by Silas because of Ava, and in the last we did see of Ava, Silas was injecting her with something, you know. He says it was the it was the uh, suicide drugs, you know. That's what you know. That's what he was saying, but how much do you want to bet that he, there was some magical some magical remedy that's gonna work? And, and, and either, I don't, I don't know, is leukemia supposed to be curable or is it just supposed to be kept at bay with medicines? I, I'm really not sure. But either I mean, way... I don't know a lot about cancer, but I just know there's like, you do chemotherapy and there's things that you take. I don't know, maybe it was like, what do they always need? Um, uh, uh, bone marrow. Don't they always like do bone marrow transplants? Yes. I mean, on soaps, not, I don't know anything again about leukemia, but... Yeah. Yeah, that that might have been it, like you know the magic bone bear bone marrow transplant and everything. So you know it, it it could be possible that that's what it was. The magic suddenly Ava is cured and we'll be coming back with a vengeance juice. You know, could be, but who knows? We really don't know. And that's where it's been left at that point. And meanwhile, Obrecht is is she's she reveal to Nina that, you know, there are some secrets about Nina's past that even Nina doesn't know, which, you know, given Nina's mindset and mind frame, I can, I can see that, you know, because it's like, yeah, you know, you're, you're a little loopy, you probably have gaps in your memory, you know, you know, it's not like something that's unheard of, you know, hi Luke, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, you know, it's possible, and of course, well, so what I'm wondering is why... Liesl would know about it because Liesl and um, what was her name, Madeline, mm -hmm. her uh, her sister Nina's mother, have been estranged for so long. Yeah. That it it you know I mean okay again it's so plot requirements but it, it just um I'd be like I don't know I'd be interested to know why or how Liesl knows anything about Nina. Yeah, that that is a very good question. Hmm. But one of the things that she ended up showing Franco, and and Nathan also showed Nina, was the video camera footage, where they saw. I think I think it stopped with Nina looking in on the baby, and or or at least leaving from looking on the baby, looking in on the baby. And one of the things is like somebody that knows the security system, what have you. That's where my mind goes. Okay, it, it's got to be Silas, because he, he's got to know something. You know. Silas or somebody Silas was able to pay off and and do the thing. Oh, so we've covered covered that. Um, yeah, so Rick in his desperation 
Um, he was. He, I, th- I think I had mentioned it. I, I think it was either on the last show or on Tumblr or something that uh, Hayden had come to town claiming to be Jake's wife, which we all know is bullshit because we all know Jake is Jason. They didn't know that, and of course Jake. Jason is like, okay, I guess she's my wife. She's got all the paperwork and everything, magically. And it turns out she and another guy to pose as pre-surgery Rick, not pre-surgery Rick, pre-surgery Jake, rather, was hired by the name I had said just a moment ago, Rick. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, because Rick is so goddamn insecure. It's like, dude, you know, you, you, you fucked up once, by trying to get Jake, incar- you know, trying Jake to incarcerate himself, and then, and, and then, so you know, you lost her, and even Molly is like, you know what, you know, get go, go on fucking Tinder, you know, <laughs> it's like, you know, and and sets up, and that's what he meets, that's how he met uh um uh, Hayden, but you know, they didn't really hit it off very much, but he's like, you know what, I have an idea, and. <laughs> You seem desperate for cash. Let me run this game by you. Like, how did that conversation go? That would have been lovely to see. Oh, yeah. What a fucking bizarre request. Very much so, but hey, it worked. And it got her in in proximity with Nicholas, who also wants to keep Jason's identity a secret, but for a different reason. And I really... I don't like what they're doing with Nicholas because it, um, it feels very out of character for him. I don't buy that whole mm-hmm. speech that he gave to Liz at the nurses' ball about like power and the whole like the last year or two has sucked. Like it just it doesn't feel like Nicholas, and it, and I feel like that's a writing decision. I don't like I'm not mad at the character exactly. I mean I am in the moment, but I think that's it's a larger mm-hmm. problem with with how they're they're writing him, and I feel it's like they need some sort of antagonistic force. With, you know, besides Helena, who only drops in, you know, once or twice a year, I guess. Um, but it just, it doesn't feel right. It's, it's rubbing me really wrong. And all of that said, I am, however, mm-hmm. kind of enjoying Nicholas and Hayden. In a weird oh, way. Oh, yes. Because they figured out each other's secret and, 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 well, <laughs> they ended up fucking it is, it's this a really lot. Sad Yeah, and you know what? I for, when it, when it comes to like her sexuality and everything, I kind of find Hayden a little bit refreshing, like, because you know because she's she is a woman who is like you know what? Yeah, I want to fuck, you know, and she's not ashamed to say it. Well, yeah, and it's not like you know her entire motivation or her reason for being. She just has a he- healthy sex life and or, or would like to have a healthy sex life and is acting on you know in such a way as to bring that about. Um, and she, yeah. she tried with Rick, who, to his credit, turned her down. He's slimy in a lot yeah. of ways, but he is, you know, true to his love for Elizabeth, his, you know, twisted up sense of love yeah. for Elizabeth. Um, and so then, you know, Nicholas is unattached and available. And, you know, I did call mm-hmm. it hate sex earlier. I would say it's actually maybe hate sex on Nicholas's part. I think it's more like he hates himself a little bit. Um, it was hated, yeah. you know, he's, he's available, she might be blackmailing him a little bit, but it's not like he's not playing ball, so to speak, <laughs> and, um, she's, yeah. she's getting, apparently, a uh, mansion out of the deal, <laughs> as well. Oh, yeah, cause, cause, then, um, you know, yeah. Week, uh, she's, you know, most recently, there, there are scenes where, uh, she's blackmailing him to letting her stay at Wintermere. Oh, yeah. <laughs> cause he can't blackmail her anymore. Because it was like a mutual blackmail thing. Yeah, yeah. But now her, her secrets have come clean. Which, the funniest thing to me, my favorite thing about Nicholas and his characterization, and this is, I guess, relatively recent, but his, like, mm-hmm. continuous, he continuously, like, asks random people to move in with him for next to no reason. And now when Hayden is like, can I move in? He's like, what? No, that would be absurd. And I'm just like, Nicholas, look at your life. <laughs> look at your choices. This yeah. is not new and different for I'll- you. Yeah, although to be fair, the last person who moved in with him happened to be his sister's cousin, so, you know, because she needed a place to stay because, well, after her, after Valerie's mom died, she yeah. needed a place to go, and Dante convinced her to stay in Port Charles, but their loft is a it little is, crowded. But, I mean, nothing, I mean, all of those things, 
so it was like I think Liz something happened with Liz and he invited her to stay with him and then he invited Britt to move back in with him after like five seconds of them getting back together and just all these ridiculous things and like that was a little bit more you know that makes a little bit more sense than all of those but then he oh, yeah. didn't offer up his home to Alexis and Molly when their house burned down I, I'm sorry if, I know it's not strictly relevant right now but I will never get over that mm-hmm. that's the one time he didn't ask someone to move in with him yeah it, it really? yeah I mean I will I I will say this. It could be that he maybe he did off screen and they were already up in no, the penthouse. Sh- let me have this. I enjoy it. It's ridiculous. And it's <laughs> okay. Wonderful. And Nick has this an idiot. Okay. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I'll give you that. But you know what? At least he's fucking honest about it. <laughs> At least he is up front. Fucking like hated, but. <laughs> well. Well, he's doing he's doing that too, but um, but yeah, that's that, I think. It, brings us about around to the nurse's ball some things come to a head like carly exposes rick with the help of of mr you know you know wannabe broadway actor uh you know his assistants because he's the one who played the the pre the quote-unquote pre-surgery jake and got introduced him and, and exposed rick in front of everybody at the nurse's ball liz of course is rightfully pissed and he's you know they're they're done and right after that, uh, Brad picks up the song that Rick was going to sing, sings it to Lucas, and proposes to okay, him. Okay, so that was hilarious. I was, like, live blogging that, not as it aired, but I was as I was watching it. And I was like, mm-hmm. really, you're going to use Marry Me as a proposal song? Because that song is saying, like, hey, we've got nothing better to do. Like, let's get married. That would be a dumb thing to do. Um, so I was just like, oh my god, at Rick singing the sort of chill, slower version to Liz. Yeah. And then Brad saying it like, hey, this might be a stupid idea, but let's get married. And then said, this might be a stupid idea, but let's get married. And I was like, yes, that is an appropriate way to use that song. So that was adorable. Mm-hmm. Um, I, yes. <laughs> I, I could not believe that Rick was proposing. Because they barely yeah. got back together. He had to pay someone off to do this whole elaborate scheme to even get Liz to get back with him. And I was just like, dude, too mm-hmm. much too soon. You're, you're coming on too strong anyway. And then of course... Even Molly at first was like... Even Molly at first was like, um, you sure about this? Maybe not so much. Um, but then it didn't matter anyway because that's of course when uh, Carly's reveal came mm-hmm. came about and i gotta say i know a lot of people have a lot to say about carly i fucking love carly um but even if you don't i mean you've got to admit like her instincts tend to be spot on she t- she's a little dramatic yeah and she can hold a grudge like nobody's business but she's oh, yeah. not often i would say wrong about people not too terrible yeah. and yeah, and credit words do. Yeah, you know? and she, that was, I mean, that was a beautiful too. reveal. And now, as Jason pointed out, yes, she could have gone mm-hmm. about that a different way. Yes, she could have, <laughs> you know, been a little more delicate with Liz's feelings. But A, how was she to know that Rick was going to be proposing in that moment? And B, she did Liz a favor in the long run, so. Yeah. So, yeah, it's like, yeah, I'm pissed off at you, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and and some of the other things that happened with the nurses' ball, especially talking about uh, like like Jason, and um, oh yeah, Jason and Robin, which that was born because later on Nicholas went to go find and comfort Liz because you know that's what he does. They're friends; they've been friends for years, and that's what friends do. And she's like, you know, yeah, I'm just gonna go for Jake now, and Nicholas. You know, his oh shit meter goes off, and he's like, oh shit, wait, wait, no, no, gotta stop, gotta stop. Ah, fuck, I gotta tell her. No, J- Jake is Jason Morgan. Wait, what? Yeah, how do you know? Uh, Helena told me. Uh, yeah, that that sort of thing. Go through all that. She slaps the fuck out of him, rightfully so, because how the fuck dare you? And and then she's she, she's like, you know, what? I gotta tell everybody, and he's like, uh, you know what? Go ahead. I don't think you do it, but you know, go ahead. You know, I don't I don't know if he had the attitude of I don't think you'll do oh, it, but well, he said, you know, go go ahead want her to certainly um mm-hmm. but you know I, what i what i will say for him although i'm not happy with him in this situation what i will say is that liz was more important to him than keeping that secret because 
Yeah. She didn't overhear him say it. You know, she she didn't back him into a corner. He chose to tell her in order to try to save her from the heartbreak of finding it out later, or if he's gonna be ever yeah. back. So while I'm still pissed at him and he's doing a shitty, shitty thing, you know, he, he did put Liz above his plans, yeah. his dastardly plans. And that was nice. That was a nice moment for him. However, well, so actually really fast before we continue with this path, because there's a lot more to talk about right here, I do want to really quick, mm-hmm. you mentioned in passing the speech that Liz gave instead of telling the truth. So I guess, well, I guess this is kind of, mm-hmm. you know, moving forward with this. Yeah, this is where I was about to go, actually. Oh, sorry. Well, you had kind of mentioned it, so I didn't know. If... Anyway, so yeah. So yeah. Liz gets up to tell everybody, says, you know, kind of freezes. She sees, you know, Patrick and, and um, Emma and Sam kind of as this little family unit, decides not to tell. And she, she gives this speech instead about Jason and Robin, which mm-hmm. plot-wise, you know, wasn't really a thing, you know, it wasn't really a plot point so much, except that, you know, the lack of saying what she intended to say, but it was a really, really nice acknowledgement of that moment, and I don't know if anyone has, has, you know, people who have been watching it that long remember that, but it's on YouTube, and you can go watch it, and it's a beautiful, heartbreaking moment, Kimberly McCullough and Steve Burton do a beautiful job with that scene, it's, you know, tragic, and it's beautiful, and just kudos to them, and what a nice nod to that moment. Even though Liz was covering, it was a really beautiful speech. Um, and given yeah. the cause uh, that they are supporting, you know, I'm really glad that they, even though, you know, she was, she was, you know, covering and, you know, trying to deflect from what she had been about to say, I'm glad that they had someone discuss, you know, talk about Robert and, and, and acknowledge that history and the reason why the nurse's ball, you know, exists beyond just thank you, Avino. So. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, and, and even got Carly and Michael, you know, having at least a civil yes, conversation for a little that bit. That was a beautiful, beautiful conversation as well. Yeah. Uh, which, especially after Michael basically, yeah, got kind of used Morgan and Kiki to get to get uh, Avery back in his house from Sonny after Avery was found. Eh, but, you know. But, uh, but I think, yeah, I think, you know, to, to go off on that just for a slight moment, because I did want to bring this up, it does show that, you know, everybody, you know, like Sonny and Carly and everybody else who, you know, lost faith in Michael because of what Morgan did, you know, they, they came around, they're like, you know what, we were fucking wrong, we're sorry, and... Carly gave Morgan one hell of a what the hell hero. Yeah. If you could call Morgan a hero, but he is. He just has a lot of growing to do. I have a small spot for Morgan, but um, like, yeah. I mean, he was so so definitely in the very very wrong here. Um, but I, I just I really like that. Um, and I, I I think they're you know they're hammering it in a little much, but I do really like that Michael is sort of you know they're very. I, sort of in a way, this generation is Jason. You know, they're, they're mm-hmm. very different in a lot of ways, but they're but they're very alike in a lot of ways. Um, and it, I just yeah. every time Carly kind of talks about Jason to Michael and and kind of acknowledges how much they are like, it's just it just hits me right in the heart. Um, especially because I sometimes forget that Jason is Michael's biological uncle. Mm-hmm. But I, I mean, I never forget that Jason is like a father, a third, I guess, father figure to Michael. Um, and I just always yeah. loved their relationship. And you know, I remember I was watching, you know, initially when Michael was, well, when he was a baby. And one scene, it's like this stupid, it's like, it's like this cute little scene. Most people may not remember it, I don't know. But I don't even remember exactly what was going on plot wise or anything. But. You know, Jason was kind of just holding Michael and like kind of bouncing him a little bit, and and the baby Michael is like like you, you know you know how babies do it they'll reach up and like like touch your face grab your face or whatever, and Jason just looked down and said hey how you doing, and just went right back to whatever he was saying, 
Although, although I think that's probably more Steve Burton just ad libbing it in because that 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 had to have been ad libbed in. But it was so adorable and sweet, and it's like that's always stuck out. It's like <laughs> that is awesome. Oh, uh, hey, babies. Jason's uh. <laughs> wanted a child since forever, and he mm-hmm. has lost a lot of children. You know, if you go back and you think about it. And it's just, he's so close to Danny, and he doesn't know that he's his. And I just, that him getting back his memories cannot happen too soon for me. It cannot. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, okay, the rest of the nurses' ball. Spencer, since since the fire oh, and everything, his, his insecurities is like, dude! Why don't you? I mean, I mean, I know you're ten, but you can't be that thick-headed. Come on, kid. Oh, I mean, even Britt came back, and 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 snuck to see Spencer at Windermere to try and cheer him up, and that didn't work completely well, until he got a visit from his mother, oh. as you know, as in Ghost Courtney, yes. which was so sweet. It was, and, it, and it had been years. Did, I mean, did you and, see and you that poll? You know, they did a poll to see if. if you weren't aware, listeners, um, mm-hmm. to see a witch of, like, four characters would come back this year um, as sort of a guest thing, and it was it was Courtney, Mike, Serena Baldwin, and, um, oh, who's the fourth? It was someone else. Uh, and, and so, yeah. I, had, I don't know if they didn't announce it, if it was going to be a surprise, um, but I at least hadn't heard who won the poll. And I was so glad it was Courtney because Spencer, mm-hmm. plus his heart, needed a kick in the rear. Yeah, and his mother was there to give it to him. She got him to take off the mask, and it was not really bad. I mean, for all the world, it looked like he just had a really bad gash out of, after a bike fall. Mm-hmm. You know, and 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 it showed Spencer is it's not as bad as he thought, and he calmed down. And he, when when Nicholas came home after the nurses' ball. He saw, he saw that Spencer's mask was off, and Spencer's like, "Hey, Dad, what's up?" And and she you know? had this a conversation with him that you know not just about the mask, but that he has needed to have for a very long time that Nicholas has completely neglected to address, and that's his you know mildly comical, or at least it started out that way, dismissal of you know uh, Cameron among others as townies, and you know as almost as long as, as this recast as this version of Spencer has been on the show he's been saying shit like that and I'm just like, Nicholas what are you doing? Like, How have you allowed this behavior and this attitude to continue? Mm-hmm. And Courtney had, you know, it, you know in addition to helping Spencer with his you know, self-esteem and discussing you know, his mask and everything was like, Spencer, you know <laughs> that makes me a townie like I didn't grow up with money like she had this really great conversation with him and um, you know he uh, Cameron I don't expect to be you know best friends anytime soon but kind of made him realize or at least made him think twice about you know the names that he calls people and this entitled arrogant attitude that he's had that has at least for me been far more grating than you know uh, endearing yeah is just uh, hope, hopefully that'll 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 work itself out, and hopefully they will stop writing plot lines, romantic plot lines with kids as though they are adults. God damn it! Yes. I mean, don't get me wrong. Phantom of the Spencer was kind of amusing, but still. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, you know, and, and I think they're they've been a little bit better about that. You know, with um, when Spencer offered Emma the ring, and Patrick was like, um, you don't need to be anyone forever anything anytime soon um you mm-hmm. know, and of course emma had sort of figured that out for herself you know t- to a point but i was really glad they had patrick kind of laying that out i'm really glad emma and cameron aren't quote unquote dating again they're just friends apparently and i just really wish they would all just stay that way until they're teenagers please yeah so so okay yeah <laughs> uh, speaking of the ring, they they did end up finding the ring. In fact, Jason found the ring, which you know he doesn't realize is his. Just as Nicholas came up, because Nicholas had found out that 
Spencer was trying to give the ring to Emma. Emma, I think he threw it and it ended up under the couch. So he was there right as they found the ring, and Nicholas is like, yeah, um, yeah, I had it. I, I think he said something about Helena had it or whatever, or what have you, yeah, or, or some kind of thing that Sam ended up believing. Yeah, Crichton Clark, uh, which they, they had known that because through Robin they discovered that Jason had been alive for longer than they'd originally thought and ended up a Crichton Clark. <laughs> so that was the cover story that Helena had the ring. But that was just cruel. I'm sorry. Yeah. To have Jason yeah. himself find the ring. I thought it was going to jump sort of memory or something. That was just mean. Yeah. So many things that you could expect would, like, you know, th- th- this is fiction. This is soap opera fiction. You would expect, like, magical things happening, you know, like magical ring finding, oh shit, memories, or magical motorcycle now that, you know, now that he's working at Julian's garage under under cover, of course, of, you know, thanks to, uh, you know, the commissioner's uh, deal with him. It's like, yeah, you go undercover with the Jeromes or I make sure your ass goes to prison, you know, that sort of thing. And, um, you know, you'd think that would spark a memory, taking Sam on a motorcycle ride to take her home. You'd think that would spark a memory. Uh, you know, and even even magical memory restoring sex hasn't worked so far. Which, oh, are are, are you ready to, to belt this one out? Oh, God. Oh, God. Because Liz knows, yes, because just a little bit of setup, you know, by the end of the nurse's ball, uh, Liz had told Nicholas, you know what, you know, I'm going to take before, this. Before we get too far into this, I feel like we should mm-hmm. very quickly at least um, talk about the nurse's ball itself, meaning like the numbers yes. and everything, you know, at least at least, at least briefly before we get into this whole thing with Elizabeth and Jason. Um, okay. Uh, so uh, just really quickly, I have not been the biggest fan of the nurse's ball as like a concept. I think the numbers aren't always very good. Maybe that's an unpopular opinion. But I, I liked it better this year for sure than last year. Um, Obrecht's opening number, I thought was great. And I could not believe that none <laughs> of the characters cracked a goddamn smile. I was like, this is delightful. Um, yeah. Had Dear Future Husband stuck in my head for way too many days. Um, <laughs> Emma and Patrick's song was really sweet and heartfelt. So, yes. Yeah, I mean, it was it was a bad wasn't bad this year yeah and of course uh eddie main covering crazy little thing called love i'm like oh fucking shit he's going freddie mercury oh fuck yeah <laughs> that is one i kind of i i need to show becky because she is a big fan of queen and freddie mercury and all that so it's like yeah i need to show her that uh because i mean granted it's it's hard to to be on the level of freddie mercury so i do not hold that against anybody if when they try but um, you know, he—I think he did a good job. Yeah. Oh God, so yeah, and and of course the closer, which that, that seems to be like the big song for the nurses' ball. You're not alone. Uh, I don't know why <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's like, okay. I'll tell you one thing though. Overused as it is, mm-hmm. it 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 hits it hits me really hard in the heart. Okay. And, and that's and that's usually it's more for more personal reasons. It's not necessarily for well, partially for plot reasons, depending on what's going on, but definitely for more personal reasons, because, you know, I do have some issues here and there, and that song is a reminder, yeah, um, you know, I'm never in it alone. It, it's it's kind of a song that, that uh, reminds me more of Becky, because she and I have been dating for over a year at this point, and it's like, you know, yeah, we're long distance now, but, you know, we, we're still we're still good, we're still strong. And so that's that explains it. Now that I've done my own little like personal revelation here. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, yes, we get to the the very very very. Uh, I'm not even going to say questionable because it's not questionable. It is just horrible direction that Liz is going. So by the end of the nurse's ball, she has come to the decision, okay, you know what, this is my chance to be with him. I've been wanting to be with him for years, and I'm going to take this, you know. And and she tries to paint it out there as like, well, you know, it, you know, Nick, Nicholas is being the voice of reason. It's like, yeah, you know what, you do this, you know, you, you could be hurting Sam, the, the quarter mains, every, you know, everybody that cares about him. You know, and she's like, "Well, they're not going to be hurt if they don't know if you know, if he doesn't know who they are and they don't know it's him." And Grasping but you know and what? Fucking 
straws. Yes. And she is taking... And, and I've even seen this come up. I mean, I think people have even tweeted at, at some of the writers. Like, yeah, um... If Jason was in his, his full right mind, if he knew his... If he had his full memory, then he would say no. But at this point, he is not. He has amnesia. He, he, he you know... It, it, it's basically the rape question. Well, yeah, and, and is I where I'm it's going about, here. It, it, I think that's a false... Um, or that's not the right way to look at it. It's not that if Jason knew who he was, Jason would not choose to have sex with Elizabeth. It's not that. It's that mm -hmm. Elizabeth knows about things about him that would affect... You know, even without his memories, like if he... If she knew who he really was and what his familial ties were and all that stuff that he would might not... And she's, I mean, she's tricking him. So it's not that, oh, well, yeah. Jason wouldn't really have sex with Liz, so that's not okay. It's that Jake Doe, or whoever who he is, she's withholding information from him. And someone um, uh, referenced, I saw, like, a line someone's talking about, it. it's like the, the bed trick. It's like if you have sex with someone and you... Uh, uh, you're not who you say you are. I don't remember. Whatever. It's it's. She's not. This is not okay. She's not. Yeah. Being forthcoming about mm -hmm. what she knows about him, and it's. I couldn't even watch. I had to. I had to like skip past the sex scene. I couldn't even watch it because mm -hmm. it's so not okay. And I mean, what what Hayden did. I mean, technically they're doing sort of the same thing, but with Hayden I wasn't quite as horrendously skeeved out by it because she didn't know who he was and it wasn't yeah. personal for her, which again does not make it okay. Hayden is still very much in the wrong and doing shady, morally wrong things, but with Liz knowing who he is and what, I mean she she can she can delude herself all she likes, but she knows him better than that, and she knows. Mm -hmm. I mean, just even if she didn't know him that well, but just seeing how he was with Hayden, she knows that if he knew Sam was his wife, even if he didn't have his memories back, he would not be sleeping with Liz. If he knew yeah. he had a son out there, he would not be, you know, spending all his time with Liz, and she is actively making a selfish destructive choice and it, you know she knows she's doing it she's she's deliberately deleting herself because she said she said I've tried to do the right things the right thing for years I've tried to be that person I'm gonna do this thing for me and it's it's God it's so horrible and I almost can't believe it but Liz has sort of consistently made really awful selfish choices in her love life and she has mm -hmm. sort of a history of treating the guys she's with poorly not on the surface but if you go back and look at you know she's always in these love triangles you know the writers don't know how to write her in a relationship apparently and she's and i know yeah. like love triangles are kind of the norm on soaps but with Liz in particular she's always going back and forth between two guys and you see her time and again choosing to be in a relationship with someone when she can't have the guy she actually wants instead of taking a step back and being on her own for a while and getting over the, whoever it is she just jumps into mm -hmm. something with someone else and most recently we've just seen her do that with Jason and Rick when she couldn't be with Jason because of Hayden she went back to, to being in a relationship with Rick which honestly I don't even like you know Rick Rick is kind of a piece of shit but I felt kind of bad for him. Like, she was using him terribly. So she's she kind of has a history of doing this on a smaller scale, and she's just kind of taken it up to the nth degree, and it's, God, it's awful to watch. Yeah, and the whole, the line that stuck out for you also stuck out with me, like, the whole, um, you know, I, I've been trying to do the right thing for years and everything. My first thought was, like, yeah, um, when you were a teenager... You, who who was it that was trying her hardest to get into Nicholas's pants just to get him away from your from her sister? Oh wait, that was Liz. Yeah, it's, it's like it, it it goes back pretty far. Yeah, and and 
I don't know how fair it is to hold something a character did it as a teenager against them, but you know what? Okay. I kind of don't care. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I, don't, well, I don't think that's especially fair, but, I mean, yeah. she's done plenty since then to, uh, oh, to yeah. bring up. Um, but yeah, I just, um, I was a little, as a shipper of Sam and Jason, hardcore, um, mm-hmm. I had been slightly concerned that Liz and Jason were going to have like a proper go round before we got around to Sam and Jason and I am no longer concerned about that shall we say because I don't think there is uh, coming back from this for Liz um when Jason finds out see and, and I'm still not sure if he's going to find out that he's Jason and then get his memories back, or if he's going to get his memories back first. I, I'm pretty sure he's eventually going to get his memories back, because he keeps he does have oh, yeah. flashes. But I don't know the order. Um, but either way, when he finds out that Liz knew and deliberately withheld it from him, I, I can't see him forgiving her for this. Maybe if Danny wasn't in the picture, maybe if there was no child... And maybe his feelings and their history would be enough for him to to get past it, you know, whether or not he picked Sam over her or whatever. But mm-hmm. keeping him from his son, I mean, maybe he'll forgive her eventually. Again, it's just so everyone gets past everything yeah. eventually because they just oh, yeah. have to because they only know, like, ten other people besides themselves mm-hmm. and, you know limited social circles, you gotta move on, but in the sort of metaphorical sense, he's never, never gonna forgive her for that. And, um, and yeah. I don't think he should. Yeah, it's like, it's like, uh, there are plenty of things I could pro- I could defend most people on. This is not one of them. It's just, you know, even even taken, you know, like like I mentioned earlier, people are talking, well, is this rape? Is this technically rape? Whether it is or not, it is definitely very high on the unforgivable scale. Because it's like, you, by doing this, you are being so selfish and, and hurting so many other people. And really, you, you're, if you care, it's not enough. It, it, it's just not enough to keep from, you know, riding that pony, if you will. <clears throat> Because you want your chance. Fuck Sam. Fuck Danny. Fuck the Quartermains. Fuck Sonny and Carly. Fuck everybody who might be glad that Jason is back and will be overjoyed. Liz Weber wants to have Jason all to herself. And now this is her chance because he doesn't know who the fuck he is. And, and again, it's it's kind of like that same thing with, with Rick and Liz. Like, Rick is so desperate for Elizabeth... He doesn't see how fucked up it is that he has to put this whole scheme into place in order to get her to give him the time of day. And Liz doesn't see mm-hmm. how fucked up it is that she has to manipulate a guy with amnesia in order to get this sort of pseudo Jake, Jason person who, I mean, obviously he is Jason, but, you know, without all of his memories and everything, it's not like Jason is willingly entering into a relationship with her. It's this sort of memoryless version of him that's, you know, with her. And she doesn't see how fucked up that is. Or, or rather, I'm sure she does, but she's heavily, heavily lying to herself. And what's more is that she's not, she, you know, she's never really gotten along with Sam that well. She, you know, liked AJ for a while, but she's not, like, BFFs with the Quartermains. Like, everyone important to Jason is only sort of on her priority list. But Jason mm-hmm. himself, it just shows, you know, if she really cared about him as much as she claims she does, then she wouldn't be doing this to him. She's No, you know? no, she wouldn't. Yeah. I, I agree with you. And I kind of feel bad for, even though I'm, again, still really pissed at Nicholas, I did kind of feel bad for him when she said, like, I've wanted this for years, and it's like, God, Liz, like... That might be true, but why would you say that in front of Nicholas, who she's been with on and off, you know, for however long? And what a kind of punch in the gut to him, who's clearly still harboring feelings for her. Those two fucking idiots, that's mm-hmm. a whole other rant. Um, 
And to say that in front of him, like, oh, every time I was with you, I was still in the back of my mind wanting to be with Jason. Yeah, well, that, that's not going to be a blow to his ego, is it? Right. I mean, like I... Like I said before, what Nicholas is doing concerning Jason and his memory and keeping everybody else in the dark, that is shitty. Super shitty. But at the same, yeah. But at the same time, he is at least fucking honest about it. You know, he he Wait, at least I, is upfront with Liz and says, you know, and says, hey, you know what? This is why I'm doing this. Here is why. You know. Oh, I see what he's, you mean. He's not. He, you mean yeah. he's like being upfront, like he's like, I know this is terrible, but I'm doing it anyway. Yes. So to me, by being honest about it, okay, because you're like, yeah, he's lying to everyone, mm-hmm. but he's being honest about it. What does that mean? Yeah. I, I got when, you. when it comes when it comes to telling Liz, he's a yeah. Patience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Liz, well, and yeah. I, you know, I was discussing this with some people on Tumblr. I'm, I'm still not sure if they're going the route with Liz, where because like Nicholas is kind of evil league of eviling it up. Um. Mm-hmm you know, conspiring with, like, Helena and Jerry and whoever else, you know, even though he's kind of trying to keep Helena on the leash, he's kind of being an antagonist right now. And so I'm not sure if they're, like, gonna have Liz go kind of dark side, or if they're just gonna have her be kind of, like, delusional and and whatever, or, like, whether or not they're gonna have her feel guilty about it, or just kind of keep this sort of lie to herself going in her little fantasy world. But, I mean... No matter which way they go, I mean, there's going to be people wanting her head when this all comes out. Oh, yeah. I mean, Jason... Probably wanting Nicholas's too, but, oh, you oh, know, yeah. not more oh, than Liz. Both of, them, both of them, but, like, you know, Jason, knowing Jason, my guess is that even if he doesn't forgive them, he'll, you know, at least be the bigger person and just kind of walk away. But, oh my god, mm-hmm. I cannot wait. I cannot wait because you know what's going to happen. I cannot wait for Carly to, like, rip Liz and Nick a new one. That's just going to oh, be yeah. delicious. That will be one of those times where I can be on her side. Oh, you know. <laughs> Definitely. Oh, wow. Oh, and you know what? It will pro- watch. Just you watch. It'll probably be the thing that that brings Michael and Sonny and Carly, you know, at least closer to reconciling a little bit. I'm willing to bet you know, so, which, hey, you know, it could, you know, in the long run, it could be a good thing, and, and, you know, hey, uh, especially since Sonny has shown definite, obvious concern to Michael, and, and, and with Michael when it comes, when it came to the whole, you know, you know, uh, drug thing and everything, so, you know, uh, so it seemed like they, they, you know, might work it out, so that, that would be, that would be kind of nice, uh, so yeah, uh, one last thing. Then we got to get out of here because I know this has gone on a little longer than normal. Uh, well, we've also had a month worth of material, but this is kind of important because, especially since this was the latest cliffhanger, um, Anna and Duke. Uh, just kind of go over them real quick. Uh, Duke put a head out on Jordan because he discovered, hey, she's wearing a wire, so she's a fucking fed. And his hitman Bruce was, you know, major incompetent. Took took some pot shots at at uh, Jordan with Anna there, dumbass. You know, obviously failed. Um, and then and then you know he reported back to Duke. Duke's like, you know, da, 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 whatever. And at the beginning of the nurses' ball, Duke is like, yeah, take her out tonight. And by the end, Duke and Anna have had shared a tango on stage, and they're like, you know what, I st- we still love each other. Let's let's go run away. And they were going to do that. And Duke tries to call off the hit, but of course Bruce doesn't pick up his goddamn phone and, and figures Duke is just being impatient. He's being impatient, but for a totally different reason. And tries to kill Jordan. Hmm? He tries to kill Jordan. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Sorry, I was just going to say, speaking of incompetence, uh, poor Charles, Mr. Incompetence 2015, uh, fucking Sean Butler, meanwhile, oh, yeah. has, you know, been, uh, Bruce gave him a call and was like, oh, we've got this last minute job out on the docks, like, come take care of it. And Sean goes, and I, okay, I'll give him this, I do not fault him for going, but after he'd been there for who knows how long, and nothing was happening, and no one was there, he didn't think to, A, call someone to check on it, you know, whether that was Bruce or yeah. someone else, to be like, why is their job going down? B, not to then be a little maybe concerned, because, hmm, if there's not a job out here, why would someone call me out here? And I guess, I 
get it that it's like someone on his uh, uh, not hit, not on his team, but you know, someone he works with. So he's not immediately mm-hmm. suspicious. But someone had just tried to take Jordan out just yeah. recently, and then TJ was like, "Oh, you mean pulled you away from my mom's bed?" And none of like just <laughs> like none of that. Well, first of all, awkward conversation. Yeah. But second of all, like none of that made Sean think, "Hmm, maybe I should go home and check on Jordan." Seriously, and now my girl did not need him because Jordan's amazing and can mm-hmm. do so much better. Cough, cough. But like, really, Sean? <laughs> really? So. Yeah. Meanwhile, and 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 Jordan to be fair, he did try and call. To to be fair, he did try and call Bruce and say, you know, hey, what's up? But uh, by that point, Bruce was a little too dead to answer the phone. A little too late. Because Jordan killed him. Yeah. Because yeah, he paid he paid the price for his lack lack of um, competence. And at that point, Anna and the commissioner show up, and and, and at this and it's at this point that that Sloan is like, yeah, uh, we we we're pretty sure that Duke is the one who tried to put the hit out on Jordan, and now Anna's got a face full of, of evidence because Bruce is his hit right hand man, but she goes to the dock anyway to meet up with Duke, who yeah, about fifteen to twenty minutes earlier or, or however long it was. He was in a gun struggle with Carlos, who Julian had sent to kill. You know, who Julian sent to kill him. And the gun went off. There was a little bit of blood. Jake ended up getting involved because he was on his way back to the room. Heard a loud noise. Instinctively went defensive position, even though it was Nathan and Maxie. He's down at the station for your questioning because, hey, you know, I mean, I mean, I, I probably would too if I was Nathan because, you know, you know, you make a loud noise and you know, you walk out a door and suddenly there's a guy holding a gun at you. Yeah, I, I would probably do the same thing, just to be sure. And, of course, with Jason's track record, most recent track record, I, I could understand him being a little overly cautious. I can understand that a little bit. Yeah, um, sure. And what a great moment was that, um, you know, when he said, like, I I don't know, I didn't... Whatever he said in the max, he's like, yeah, and I wear socks with sandals. And he's like... You, and he just gives us, like, what the fuck? <laughs> and he, like, he doesn't understand. <laughs> Oh, that was, yeah, was like, Maxie, and Maxie was dead serious. That was beautiful. So anyway, we cut to the dock, and Anna's waiting there, and here comes Duke, who's been shot, or at least has blood on him. Yes, and and appears to be dying in Anna's arms. More older older members of the of the show that probably remember it. I think this is how Duke originally died in the eighties. Oh, so. that's like the worst kind of deja vu. Poor Anna. Yeah, definitely. At the same time, Carlos goes to Sabrina's after Sabrina had, you know, had, had talked to Michael about their relationship, which we will get into on another show because we are running a little short on time. And Carlos walks in and he's like wide-eyed, shell shocked, and she's like, "You need to help me, Sabrina." It's like, dude, you just most likely killed a guy, unless you're like shell shocked from the fact that you almost died, which eh, understandable. <laughs> I can understand Stop that. Stop showing up on Sabrina's doorstep and involving her in his mob business. Just saying. Yeah, she's like, God damn it! You know, this is the kind of life we're trying to keep the the baby. You know, you know the baby that I'm I'm supposed to be taking care of for Michael. Yeah, we're trying to keep him, keep her rather, away from this life. So can you not? So what are we thinking? Is Duke gonna bite the dust? I mean, that was either a... that or they're gonna fake his death. One of the two. Oh, oh. Because I because I know Ian Buchanan is leaving. He is. Then, yes. Well, then here's here. Yeah. This is my this is my then theory. Then I think he is gonna die, and and they're gonna play out some sort of fucked up romance shit with Anna and what's his face, creepy McCreepers. Oh, uh, Sloan. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To be fair, Sloan has softened a little bit towards Anna. Yeah. But he's, still... he's got a ways to go. I liked the, the first actor who played him. I kind of got a mm-hmm. vibe with them, kind of almost from the beginning, and I thought it was you know I was like okay. I thought they maybe had a history back when she was his mentor. And I was like, okay, I can see it. And then the recast was just so much skeezier. And I just don't want him near anyone I like. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, well, that that is about all we I know we can cover at this point. Um, editing this is going to be fun because fucking Comcast. Uh, I blame Comcast. But, um... Yeah, so uh, one other one other thing. Speaking of departures, 
Uh, it has been announced. It is out there that Tony Geary is for sure leaving. No. So he, what? yeah, he he is gonna be going. So we don't we don't know how Luke is gonna go out, but Luke is going to be leaving. Um, okay. Which may tie into the fact that Jeannie Francis is coming back for a little bit too. That's awesome. Maybe they'll like go out yes. together. That would be a really nice yeah. send off, I think, if the two of them kind of left on some, like, last adventure, you know, and then we can just sort of imagine Luke and Laura off adventuring forever. I would want there you go. I, I don't want either of them to die. I mean, that yeah. sounds out of context. That's a little weird. But you know what I mean? Like, I don't need a big yeah. death scene. You know, we've gotten all sorts of drama with them. I just would really kind of like that sort of... I mean, even though, well, no, God, because I gotta say, I love Luke and Tracy together, and it would kind of kill me for Tracy to be left alone again, but mm-hmm. there's something I think just that would be really nice about Luke and Laura kind of riding off into the sunset. Yeah. Yeah, especially with a lot of, the hell, how much history do they have? I mean, let's see, two kids, saving the world, you know, you know, taking down Frank Smith, because, you know, I, I don't know how involved Laura was with that, but, you know, she was around. I mean, all their adventuring oh. and, and just, I mean, they're such a staple of the show and, and people who have never seen an episode of General Hospital in their lives have heard of Luke and Laura and no matter what you think of their origins or, or you know, everything that's happened since, I really think there would be something very um, apropos about them having that, you know, oh, yeah. that last, you know, ride off into the sunset. Yes. Uh, so with that, we are going to get out of here for this week. And if we wanted to find you on the social media, where could we find you, Julia? Come find me at gh-musings.tumblr.com. You can come chat at me about General Hospital or Days of Our Lives anytime. Yay! And if you wanted to find me on the social media, you could find me on the Tumblrs and the Twitters at gomer 21 X. I also have my own personal uh, Facebook fan page, Gomer the Ranting Thespian. Uh, the links for all of that will be below. Do check out, I think I said at the beginning of the show, do check out uh, my girlfriend slash title card artist's uh, webcomic, Otherworldly, which that link will also be below. Um, you can also find my other stuff on rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com. Both of which have their own Facebook pages, their Tumblrs, and their own Twitter accounts. So go check them all out, like them, follow them. You'll get all sorts of good stuff, and not just from me either. Both both sides have like some really talented people on them, and admittedly, there's a little bit of crossover, <laughs> but that's okay uh, because we're we're all good and we're all friends here. So um, so yeah, thank you guys for listening, and until next time, hopefully, will not be a month. Until then, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with Julia, signing off. The Port Charlie Podcast is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Our show's theme is The Complex by Kevin McLeod. Find out more at Incompetech.com. If you like this show and want to help support future episodes, head over to Patreon.com slash Gomer21XX. For a contribution as little as a dollar per production, you can get early access to all future productions, as well as monthly patron-only vlogs and announcements. Our show's artwork was produced by the talented Becky Hopkins, who can be commissioned by going to patreon.com slash Hop. Check us out on iTunes or visit rtgomer.com for more great shows.